Good morning. Hi, everyone. Sorry about the delay. I had some computer issues, had to restart. Thanks for joining us today on today's community chat all about aliens. Uh, feel free to say hello. Let us know where you're joining from. My name is Jackie Mancuso, and I am joining you all from Northern Illinois. Hi, Vyrie. It's been a long time. <laughs> hello, T. All right, so the reason why I am hosting this session is because about a month ago, I had my first ever alien experience, and it kind of rocked my world, and I talked about it in one of my oracle readings here on Insight Timer, and the group, the community seemed to resonate with it, and we had a good chat going. So I will share with you the experience that I had. Um, as I chat, feel free to type in the chat any comments, any questions, any similar experiences. And this is, this is a community chat, so I want to hear all about your experiences, your knowledge. Um, I'm hoping to learn more about aliens and extraterrestrials because I fully believe that they are among us, right? They're, they're here. How can they not be? I think there's way too much evidence pointing to the existence of them than the evidence uh, denying them. Tammy is from Redding, California. Awesome, awesome. Thanks for joining. Helen, good morning from planet Earth. <laughs> I think I'm on planet Earth. So this was about a month ago. Um, I was at a bar with my friends and we were playing darts and the dartboard is right outside of the bathroom. So this man in his 60s walked out of the bathroom and just, you know, like made a joke like, oh, don't hit me like everybody else. Uh, <laughs> and then he was super friendly and he came up to me and my friends and was just chatting with us, getting to know us. He introduced himself. We figured out that he lived just a couple blocks away from us. Um, and he was he kept saying I'm so glad you guys are here. And it wasn't creepy. It was like a very friendly, very comforting. It was, I'm so glad you guys are here. All right. Like he was a really nice guy. He's very charismatic. So as he was talking with us, and this is something I do all the time, but I was just getting Sagittarius vibes from him. So I had to ask to affirm my own intuition. I was like, hey, are you a Sagittarius? And he was a little taken back. Like, yes, I am. When's my birthday? You know, it could either be November or December. And I didn't even have to think. I just knew. I was like, well, you're a December baby. And he was like, yeah. And then he asked what day. And it was the most instant download I've ever had. And I was like, it's the 17th. I didn't even have to think about it. It just appeared in my head. And he said that it was his correct birthday. So at the time, I was like, wow, look at me. Look at my skills. Like, I was able to pick that out. Whatever. So that was just the, sh the first little instance. And then he... Um, it was just doing normal human things, right? I, at this point, I, he was just a normal human. And he was walking over to his friends and he'd hang out with them for a little bit and then come back by us and just say hello, chat, chat, chat. Um, he's very friendly, very charismatic, right? Those are the best words to describe him, just open. And then at one point, I was sitting at a small table by myself and he came up to me. And without like no invitation, no permission, he just like locked eyes with me and started with the story. And I was taken back and I was trying just to process all of this. So he came up to me and he said, I am an Anunnaki. I am here from the planet Nibiru. My planet orbits around your solar system and we come back every 36,000 years. We come here to harvest gold from your earth because it heats our sun. He was saying that Nibiru and our sun are binary suns, they're binary planets, and that the only thing that will heat their sun is gold. So he was telling me that he uses humans to harvest gold for him and his people. And he was telling me all this, and I was taking it very open-mindedly. And I asked him, non-judgmentally, I asked him, well, are, are you using humans as slaves? And was, so nonchalantly, he was like, yeah, but if we like you, we'll bring you back with us. And he was kind of like 
alluding to the fact that he liked me and that, you know, whenever they're done with their job, like he wanted to bring me back with them. And at the time I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. Whatever, whatever. I'm trying to think if he said anything else. Oh, I asked him how long he was aware of this. Like if this is something that he had just remembered or if he's known this his whole life. And he said that he had known since he was 13. And at the time, this guy's 64 years old. So he's known for quite a while. And that was it. And then he walked away and he went back to his friends and I went back to my friends. And of course I told, I told my husband right away because he's, he gets it. The rest of our friends kind of would probably think I'm nuts. So I told Paul and he was like, oh, that's, that's cool. Like he was still kind of iffy. And then, um, you know, time went on and then this guy was by himself again. So I approached him because I wanted to get my story straight. Um, oh, at the time I also, cause I had been drinking. So I also texted my friend every detail that I had. Cause I was like, I want to remember this tomorrow morning. This, uh, cause I didn't know what was happening. So I sent her all the details, but I couldn't remember the name of the planet that he was from. So I approached this guy while he was by himself. And I asked him, Hey, where did you say that you're from again? And his response was the town that he said he was from. He was like, I'm from Arlington Heights. Like it was almost, I couldn't tell if he was playing with me or if he had no memory of it. So that was it. That was the end of my night with this guy. Um, the next morning I woke up and I was like, was that real? Like I knew it was real, but how much of that was, how much of that was him like playing a game with me or how much of it was legit? So the first thing I did was I hopped on Facebook because he had a very familiar name. So I searched him up on Facebook found a guy that lives two blocks away from me whose birthday is December 17th. So I thought, you know, maybe he might be playing around. He let me guess his birthday just as like a, a friendly kind of thing. No, his birthday is December 17th. Um, and then I couldn't remember the name of the aliens or the name of the planet. So I searched aliens using gold to heat their sun. And then the Anunnaki appeared. And if you are curious, it's Anunnaki. So I found that alien race and I started researching them and everything that came out of his mouth was exactly what was on the internet. So that could lead me to two places. That could be that he really was an Anunnaki and he was telling the truth or that this guy has done a lot of research on alien races and likes to talk to young women at bars and convince them that he's an alien, right? Brenda, yes, the feeling that I got from this situation though, like it seemed otherworldly, like it seemed like there's a reason why this guy chose me out of all of those people in the bar. So then this birthday thing kept coming back in my brain because I mean, I, like I read astrology, I'm pretty good at guessing people's signs every once in a while, you know, but no one's ever asked me to guess their birthday. Um, but I can't describe how quickly this, the date of his birthday just appeared in my brain. So I was thinking, I wonder if he used some kind of like telekinesis, tele telepathy, like if he gave me that download to test and see where my energy was, like how far he could go with me. That's kind of the, the feeling that I got from that. So then um, did all that research, found everything that he was talking about. Re I researched some stuff about binary suns that or binary planets. I, don't, I, don't, I still don't know what they are, but I did a little bit of research on that, just laying in bed the next morning. And that kind of opened my eyes to a lot more things. Um, but then, sorry, my dog is under the table. <laughs> this is Piston. He's a big boy. He's a good boy. He likes aliens too. So later that day, I went on a hike and I found this group through an app called Meetup. So I'd never met some of these people before. And I clicked with one of the girls on the hike and I decided to tell her about this alien experience because she seemed really open to it. So I told her the whole story and her first reaction was, oh, I bet that he was channeling the alien. And that made a lot of sense because we were at a bar, we were drinking. This guy did get pretty drunk like as the night went on. So they're called spirits because when you lower your vibration enough with that alcohol, spirits can come in and take over you and, you know, do what they need to do. That's, that's what happens when you black out. Your consciousness is taken over by something else. So that was about a month ago. Haven't seen this guy since. 
right? He he didn't say that he goes there all the time, but like that's our favorite place right now. We're playing darts there on, like twice every weekend. So the fact that we haven't seen him again also makes me wonder like, is this guy even real? <laughs> Did he just appear in the universe to send me this message? So uh, that's my story. Thank you guys for listening to it. Um, I'm going to see what Brenda has to say. And then please feel free if you guys have had any experiences, if you know someone who's had experiences, if you have any general knowledge about aliens, about extraterrestrials, please share it here. I want to learn from you guys and I want us to all learn from each other. Very, very interesting, Brenda. I don't think he was messing with you. Maybe another being was in his body in that moment. Always use your discernment. Surround yourself with white light. Thank you, Brenda. I do have um, a, a field of protection around me all of the time. I'm very good at affirming that I only work with vibrations of love, light, gratitude, joy, compassion, and, and the like. Um, the only thing that was hard for me to digest if he was being if he was channeling someone is the fact that he gave me that age I asked how long have you known that you are an Anunnaki and he said since I was 13 I don't know if you guys have any because if he will if he, if that was a spirit channeling through this man's body the spirit would have always known that they're an Anunnaki, right? Like, did you find out that you're a human at 13? I don't know. Brenda, I've never had any experiences, but find it fascinating. Check out Elizabeth April on YouTube. She's always, she always speaks about aliens. I'm going to write her name down because I love learning about this stuff. So, Elizabeth. Sorry for shaking. Elizabeth April, I will check her out. Oh, Christy loves her. She follows her on Instagram too. Okay, cool. There is, there's the next person that I will do, dive into. So I wrote out just some talking points because I don't know much about aliens, but, um, Alexander Quinn is someone who I have came across. Let me, Alexander Quinn. I follow him on YouTube. He doesn't post too much and sometimes his videos are like a little bit too out there for me. Um, but he says that he works with the Arcturians. So I'm not sure if you guys know anything about the Arcturians. I don't. <laughs> um, and then also Alex Collier. He is another, he's been around for quite some time, and I have never listened to his exact um, account of what has happened, but I've heard others tell his story. And Alex Collier is a man who says that he was um, contacted by the Andromedons, I believe as a child, and then they would take him on their ship and like show him around and then drop him back off, and it would be like a recurring situation where they, he would get picked up and then they would show him stuff and then they drop him back off. And if I'm remembering correctly, he described the Andromedons as like the stereotypical alien that we would think of. He described them as very tall and lanky, um, light gray skin with the, the big heads and the big eyes with the small chin. So that's just very interesting. And then, I don't want to use all my talking points now because I want this talk to go on forever. <laughs> Yesterday, I was listening to a video, um, Tarot by Janine. I follow her just for general tarot and worldly updates. But she was talking about a man that I've never heard of before. And I thought it was interesting that I found this video last night as I was making dinner in preparation for today's talk. Sorry, I'm just moving all my crystals all around. Um, so she was talking about a man named Bill Cooper, who is another known uh, contact person with the ETs. Bill Cooper um, experienced some UFO sightings, 
And I don't know if at the time he was working with the military or not, because uh, I was like half listening as I was cooking, but something about Bill Cooper was exposing his, he's a whistleblower by nature. Um, he had some experiences with UFOs. He reported them, he blew the whistle on them. And then the government wanted to shut him up, but they also brought him on to for like more intel. Um, but then Bill Cooper wrote a book about his experiences. And it said that if you buy his book, to buy the older versions, like the 1991 version, because every time they republish it, they take stuff out. So then Tara by Janine, she read her cards and she asked questions like if what he was saying was true. And what she got from the cards is that he everything in his book is true, but he didn't even say everything that happened. Like there was more that he held on to, to his death. Um, so if you read his book and read everything that he put out there, she uncovered with the cards that there was even more in there. Christy, I also love Cosmic Disclosure on Gaia. Interesting. Lots of good interviews all about aliens. Is Gaia a paid subscription? I feel like I wanted to join Gaia, but I didn't like the monthly subscription. But I know that they have a lot of good stuff on there. TJ, the lore is there are a bunch of beings on Earth who are reincarnated here after a previous existence in another part of the universe. Some of us have only ever incarnated here on Earth. Yes, TJ, I have heard the same thing. And um, I've heard that those, those of us who have only been incarnated here on Earth tend to be younger souls. Um, and those who are incarnated only as humans on Earth are, never mind, that was the wrong talking point. I've also heard that those of us who have been on other planets, incarnated as other species, now we're back here on Earth to help usher in this new ascension of the Earth. It is a paid subscription. Thank you, guys. Uh... Helen, exactly. The government knows and they don't want us to know. I think I agree with you, Helen. It is indeed true. I have had friends who have been on the ships. Helen, I would love if you could just explain what they have explained to you. I'm very curious about these types of things. Brenda, I've heard contact is getting closer, but we would freak out. It sounds cool, but also like, whoa, trippy. So, yes, I agree. Um, and it depends on how prepared you are and how accepting you are of what they have to bring. I feel like there are, um, there are like high loving extraterrestrials out there and there are those really low wanting to take over humanity, extraterrestrials out there. Um, I feel like they are already in this earth. They are in the souls of people, right? They may be integrated like a hybrid, like a human and an extraterrestrial working together. The humans may not be aware that they have extraterrestrial within them. They may be completely aware of all of their powers and they're using them for good or they're using them for evil. Um, I feel like it's just becoming more and more common knowledge that this stuff is coming out. However, Brenda, I, I like weird experiences. Like I get excited about that stuff, uh, but I do see how it would be strange to meet an alien. But when I met this guy, it wasn't even, like, I didn't even think twice. It just seemed so normal. It just seemed so natural. He was telling me that he's an alien. He was telling me that his people use humans as slaves. And I was just like, you don't say, tell me more. And there was no fear. It was, yeah, it was very interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, Helen, you're Friend, your bar friend was indeed channeling info. All right. How do you how do you know that, Helen? Read the Roswell experiment. I'm gonna write that down too. Roswell. 
experiment. I was in a spiritual group with two people who started sharing info with each other and realized they had both been on a ship. That's exactly what I'm trying to cultivate here with this chat. <laughs> That's very cool. They described the inside of the ship and knew they had both been on a ship. That's so cool. I believe it too, Christy. I also meant a person who can... Oh, you also met a person who can call in the ships. I think you were talking about that on Friday, Alan. That's awesome. They probably... That's probably why the guy told you he was being honest. Um, oh, because you do the same thing. So how would you know that he was channeling if you didn't see him in the moment? T, I've only been inside a ship during sleep paralysis. T, when you're sleeping, you are out of your, like you're not in your conscious mind. You slip into your unconscious and your ego goes away. So it's easier for them to make contact with you. So if you're in sleep paralysis, who's to say that they are not like, like, humans can put you under anesthesia, so why can't aliens put you under something so that you are literally paralyzed as you're awake in their ship? T, I think that that was a contact point for you. When they want to talk with us, they will use us to channel info. What do you mean, how would you know if you didn't see him? I mean, Helen, like... Like you weren't in the room with me when this was happening, but now I see what you're saying. If he, he just came up to me and just like started encyclopedia <laughs> information, like he was trying to send me information. So I can see why that would, why that would be channeling. Okay. Interesting. 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 Kim, it's really great. Gaia. So many interesting topics, shows, and movies. Okay, maybe I'll have to bite the bullet and look into Gaia because I've been hearing about it over and over. T. True. Though sleep paralysis has been pretty common for me on and off. I didn't speak to any aliens, but it was pretty... See ya, Brenda. It was pretty disturbing. Oh. Did you see things that were disturbing or was it just the feeling of not being able to move and knowing that you're somewhere else that was disturbing. Helen, aliens can do so many things. Our problem is when we question the experience. I like that. Aliens can do so many things. Our problem is when we question the experience. I love it. So, are aliens and spirit guides the same things, right? Are they all from the same realm, or are they different things? That's where I'm still trying to figure that out. TJ, our world has certain physical limitations that restrict us. There may be higher... There may be higher dimensionality and... Um, Invisible to us, but navigable to other beings. Our world has certain physical limita limitations that restrict us, 100%. There may be higher dimensionality, invisible to us, but navigable to other beings. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's my goal here on Earth, is to ascend to those higher realms, because I think all of us can. And I would love to be able to access all of the things on this Earth that we do not have access to just yet. Helen, there are no accidents, Jackie. You were open to the experience, and so the channeling happened. Yes, I was. And I mentioned this uh, last week in the Oracle reading, but I did not mention it here. Um, about a month or two before I had that experience, I was watching a documentary. I think it was like a bogus Netflix documentary, so who knows how much truth is actually in it. But it was a documentary about people talking about their alien experiences. And I was just so, like, not jealous because... Like I was happy that they got to have the experience, but I would just, I thought it was so cool. So I literally paused the documentary, sat back on my couch and like looked out to the universe and I put my hands up and I was like, I volunteer. And then I bet that guy came. So Kim, you won't be disappointed with Gaia. All right. All right. <laughs> 
T, the feeling and the sounds was disturbing with your sleep paralysis. It was over a decade ago, probably, so I can't recall it well now. You probably block some of it out if it was that disturbing. But that's very interesting. Very, very interesting. Helen, hard no. Aliens and spirit guides are not the same. Aliens live on other planets. Your bar friend let you know where he specifically was from. That's very true. Kim, your mother believed that she was from another planet, a water planet. Kim, what would she talk about? That is so interesting. Helen, aliens is such a generalized term, but that's what humans use, generic. You were on Atlantis. What did you find in on Atlantis? Oh, this is great. I'm so happy that I'm attracting people who have had experiences. I love this stuff. I feel like the more, um, the more that I learn about it and the more that I bring it into my life, the more experiences that I will cultivate. Christy, um, Christy was told the same thing, Helen. Christy, are you talking about the generalized term? All right, so let's, I want to go on that, Helen, that aliens is a generalized term, but that's what humans use. It's generic. So, because here's where I'm shifting my perspective. We are all human beings, right? We are all the same. We are classified. Oh, Christy was also on Atlantis previously. Share, 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 share. So we're, we are human beings and we classify ourselves into male, female, white, Hispanic, black, Asian, all these different categories. We categorize ourselves into Polish, German, African, Canadian, you know, all these different segregations, but we are all humans. So what I am believing that the goal of humanity is right now is to take away all of those labels and just realize that we are all the same, that we are all one. So if aliens are more advanced and higher ascended than we are, have they already because I'm not doubting that there's different species, right? I understand if someone is born in Germany and if someone is born in Uganda, they are they look very different. They come from different cultures. They have different, you know, makeup. Um, I guess where am I going with that? Are the aliens as divided as we think they are? Or are they so much more advanced that, than we are that they learned to collaborate and all work together? That's where I was going with that. Helen, when we... Uh, we align our, <laughs> when we align our energy frequency with an alien that chooses to channel through us, it happens. It is not unusual. Lots of people channel. I know that. <laughs> How do you do it? I don't know. I think channeling is very cool, and I think I still have a fear about channeling, and that's why I haven't explored it yet. I guess because I'm afraid that a negative entity will come through or something that might do something that I don't, um, like physically. But I also know that I affirm that I only work with energies of love, light, healing, gratitude, joy, compassion. Leanne has Gaia too. Lots to learn on there. They have people that channel beings from other planets. Very interesting. Plus lots of other subjects. All right, guys, I will subscribe to Gaia. <laughs> Helen, go to YouTube and play the videos by Barbara Marcin Marciniak. Barbara Marciniak. Is she another channeler? I mean, I'm familiar with channeling. I've watched videos of channeling. I would just rather do it myself, right? Get to the source myself. Um, one of my favorite astrologers is Pam Gregory, and she often speaks with an alien named Zach, who is channeled by Barbara Goldfer or something. I can't remember her name. 
but one of Pam Gregory's friends channels Zach, and then Pam Gregory asks him questions, and it's very interesting. Helen, she channels Pleiadian information. Very advanced, but she is channeling good info. When we did um, the reading here on Insight Timer on Friday, this was all started by the, um, the Pleiadian card. And then there was a woman in our chat who was talking about blood types and alien races, and I mentioned that I was A-positive, and she said that A-positive is linked to the Pleiadians. So I am interested in the Pleiadians now, looking to see what I can learn from them. Molly McCord is another astrologer. I will look into her. Look at all this information. This is all information that you guys would be learning in our spiritual community. It is the group that I started here on Insight Timer where we share our knowledge and learn from others. Feel free to join our spiritual community and throw all of your information in there. You guys know so much. It is okay, of course, to channel your own info. Nothing wrong with that. I just like having extra information. Do you mean by channeling through other people? Having extra information by channeling through other people. All of us here on the planet are here to connect with each other. 100%. 100%. Uh, so with that blood type, we learned that Pleiadians are connected to A positive, And then we also learned that O, like O type blood, is linked to the reptilians. And that is as far as we got. And I tried searching the internet to find more about that, and I went nowhere. So all I know is A plus is linked to the Pleiadians, and O is linked to reptilians. Oh, so of course, actually, we can all channel. I fully believe that too, Helen. I believe that we all are born with all of these amazing abilities, and we just forget them as we're here on this 3D density. Um, with all of the indoctrination that is placed on us throughout our lifetime. Uh, it's, it's all about just uncovering and remembering. T is answering to Carla. Looks like several plans. $11.99 a month, $99 a year, or another $2.99 an annually. Thank you, T, for your secretary work. You are always doing the background work for us. Helen, listen to Barbara. You won't be disappointed. Well, thank you. I will definitely listen to her. What about, I wanted to ask you guys um, if you have had experiences or not, or even if you're just interested in this kind of stuff, what is the feedback that you get from your family and friends? Are they... Are they in it with you? Do they think that you're nuts? Are they curious to learn about what you have to say? Just... Just interested. This is a topic that I won't even breach with my family. I think my family thinks that I am completely wacko. Uh, yeah, Helen family and friends think I'm nuts. I'm lucky that my husband understands. He doesn't get into this stuff like I do, but I can tell him anything and he's usually like, all right, that makes sense. So at least I have that support at home. Um, and in the beginning, our friends thought that I was completely nuts. And now they're starting to see that, all right, what Jackie's talking about makes more sense than what we're hearing elsewhere and that kind of stuff. Um, but I've luckily been able to find a lot of, within the last couple of months, I've found this like group of women in my town that are all like, like I could talk about this stuff with them, like it's common knowledge. So I think that's really cool. I'm starting to attract people who get it. T, most of my family isn't into it. Your partner is as woo-woo as you are. Yay! That's, that's awesome. I have someone to share with every day. That's great. Helen, I don't listen to them because they're not on the same journey. That's okay. We all have different paths. Yes, Helen, I definitely agree. I definitely agree. I am attracting others of like mind. I am. I attract everything that I desire. 
I'm a manifester, guys. I have the, the luck of the human design manifester energy type. So whatever I speak somehow comes back to me. TJ, some people are open-minded, many are not. The metaphysical is interesting, but not for everyone. Yep, I agree. <laughs> I wonder if it's fear. Fear of giving up the comfortable reality that they have been plopped in, right? Because the metaphysical is for everyone. It's what makes everything happen, right? I feel like once you wake up to this kind of stuff, there's no going back to sleep. There's no um, going back to how other people think because there is no other way because this is like the truth, right? It's not even... I don't know. I don't know how to say it. T, my baby sister is very open-minded, so we can share lots of ideas. That's great. That's great. One of my... So I'm the baby of 10 kids. I don't know if I've mentioned that on here. Um, I'm the baby baby. Like, the next oldest is seven years older than me, and they're all pretty grouped together. And I'm like the baby baby. And out of those nine older siblings, there's one who is sort of maybe on board with what I can talk about. Um, the other ones, I just don't even bother. I just don't even bother. Fear blocks anyone who chooses that energy. Yes, Helen. Exactly. Once you know the truth, there is indeed no going back. Very, very cool. What else can I talk about? I used up all my talking points, guys. Thank you for sharing your experiences. Crazy to hear that Helen has known friends who have been on a ship and they found out about it through a shared conversation. I think that's awesome. T has seen an alien ship during a sleep paralysis episode. That's nuts. Helen, I mean, what do you think when my parents discovered as a baby I was sleeping with my eye? <laughs> That's so weird. I'm sorry to laugh at you, Helen, but I think if I'm open-minded and if I were to find my baby sleeping with her eyes open, I'd be a little freaked out. I'm talking to imaginary friends. Do you remember your imaginary friends? Because I don't. I blocked out a lot of my childhood. I had a pretty dysfunctional childhood and I'm curious to see if I can like bring up some of those repressed memories to see if I had more like magical experiences as a kid. I have been an alien for a long time. Remember, Jackie? Oh. Helen, what, where are you from? What are you? For those of you who joined a little bit into the talk, if you missed my story, I will just briefly touch over it again. I was at a bar about a month ago, and I met a man who was very charismatic, he asked me to guess his birthday, and it was like a download. I knew exactly what day he was born. Not the year, but I was correct. Some time goes by at the bar, and then one time when I'm sitting by myself, he walks up to me, looks me in the eyes, and tells me that he's an Anunnaki from the planet Nibiru, that his planet is a binary planet within our solar system. They come around every 36,000 years. They hop onto Earth to... Um, extract gold to heat their sun because without the gold from earth their sun would die and he was very um, matter-of-fact about this so I asked him if he was using alien or if he was using humans as slaves to to harvest the gold and he was like yeah like there was no big deal about it and that was uh, a very eye-opening experience I don't remember them by name now. They channeled through me back then. Now others do. Helen, I'm so glad you found me here on Insight Timer. <laughs> Never leave. <laughs> T, our reality is there is so much we don't know. It takes a lot of energy and mental discipline to explore that. Yes, it does. For many, it's more comfortable to stick to what's written down. Conventional dogma and not venture into the unknown, unmeasurable. Yeah, it is, it is comfortable. 
It is comfortable. And it, 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 I'm sad for those people who don't want to explore something uncomfortable or something unknown because they're limiting themselves as to what, what kind of magic they can experience in this incarnation here. Helen lives in Northern California, was born in Roswell, New Mexico, and conceived during the time of Area 51. There are beings who do indeed have evil energy, you will know. Yeah, and I think a lot of those evil energy people are involved in lots of high positions in our societies. But not for long. <laughs> Is that why? Okay, the Roswell experiment. Was that around the time that you were born, Helen? Are my credentials good enough? I wasn't testing to see if you're good enough. I was just interested to hear your background. Which, now that you say Area 51, I do remember you talking about that in the past. Oh, that's so cool. Curious. Curious, curious. Tammy sent you a friend request, Helen. I live in Northern California. I would love to talk to you. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm making real life friends here. I love being the host for you guys. Love it, love it. Well, let's pull a card. I'm going to pull from Work Your Light. Joy is asking what Area 51 is, Helen. I'll let you explain it. I have a, a novice understanding, but I'm sure you know a lot more about it. Helen, the Roswell Experiment is a book that shares what actually happened in Roswell with the aliens. So cool. So, Work Your Light was the deck that pulled the Pleiadian card that started all of this alien talk. So, let's see what other message they have for us today. Not necessarily the Pleiadians, just this deck in general. And our spirit guides. Let's see what they want to say to us. Where they found the alien body that ended up to be studied by the government. Didn't, like, Disney or Pixar make a spoof on that? Something nine. I can't remember. Helen, what kind of, um, like what species have you been able to channel? I'm just curious if you've had any specific encounters. And when you channel, do you, because I've heard of some people channeling and like they're able to record it in a way that helps them remember, or like, do you have someone else listen to you while you channel? Spoken with a Lemurian. Lemurian. What did they have to say? Oh, that's exciting. I need more of your energy, guys. Nothing's coming out yet. Oops. Look at that. Here we go. I actually met them in Mount Shasta. Like, in person? Tammy loves Mount Shasta. Alright, so the card that was pulled today is Deep Replenishment. So let's see what our guides what, I'm trying to get that glare out deep replenishment you just can't see the text but on the bottom it says retreat rest and be held they live under the mountain mountains are so magical the most selfless thing you can do is fill up your own inner well when we are running around half filled we subconsciously look to things and people around us to give us the nourishment and nurturing that we so deeply crave. Nothing can grow in barren lands. You are no good to anyone if you're running on empty. The feminine is bountiful, fertile, and rich. Tend to your own well and watch as the amount you have given. You have tend to your own well 
and watch as the amount you have to give multiplies. If your inner well isn't full, you will find yourself craving things from the outside world to fill it. This is our body's instinctive way of reaching for the grounding and nurturing that we are not allowing ourselves. What nourishes you? What refuels your body? What is nectar for your soul? What brings you back to life? What is your secret medicine? What makes you feel abundant and fertile, overspilling with life? It may be gardening, arranging flowers, getting a massage, using luxurious essential oils, snuggling up on the couch, hiking, sipping a good coffee at your favorite cafe, reading about sacred sites, talking about aliens, it doesn't say that, <laughs> spontaneous bike rides, walking along the beach, or yin yoga. What nourishes you is your medicine. When you give yourself the medicine that you need to be nourished, you nourish all those around you, for there is more good to go around. Do something that deeply replenishes you today. I took this as if you are hoping to have contact with these extraterrestrials, do something to replenish yourself so that you are whole and they will come contact you while you are whole. My dog is dreaming. I don't know if you guys can hear that. Um, so my dogs have also been dreaming a lot harder for the last, like, month, month and a half. Um, they dream sometimes, but, like, this last month, month and a half has been every time they're sleeping, they're running. Their face is doing that weird, like, thing. <laughs> they're barking in their sleep. There is a very beautiful conjunction coming on April 12th between Neptune and Jupiter in the sign of Pisces. This is a conjunction that happens. They are both the dual rulers of Pisces. This, the last time this happened was 166 years ago. So there is lots of beautiful, dreamy, mystical energy in the air. And I think that my dogs are feeling it. And I love that. I love that, love that. Um, Helen, there's a crystalline grid under Mount Shasta. If you explore, you can find info about it. Thank you. That's so cool. And look, you guys are making friends. I love it. I love it. All right. Well, my computer has been having issues that I need to address. It's been plugged in this whole time, but the battery is going down. So I need to hop off before my computer dies and figure out how to get my computer to charge again. <laughs> Northern California sounds awesome. Helen spends time in Arcata and Eureka, also gone to Redding. You are so welcome, Helen. I'm glad that you found a friend. I'm glad that you and Tammy found each other here today. Thanks from Arizona, Erica. Thank you for coming. Tammy, great talk. Thank you. <laughs> Jackie needs to channel some energy for her PC. I'll try. Kareem, you're the best. Thank you, Kareem. You can only see in others what you hold inside of yourself. Thank you, Carla. This was a great chat. Feel free to join our spiritual community. It is the group that I started here on Insight Timer. And share um, what you know. Ask questions. Helen, remember to look at Barbara. Look at, I have all my notes from today. I wrote it all down. Yes, I will be. I'll be looking for Barbara Marciniak. I might even listen to her now while I go fold some laundry after I fix my computer. All right, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for talking about aliens with me and 
affirming that I'm not a crazy person. <laughs> I hope to see you soon. If you haven't followed my Insight Timer profile, feel free to follow the profile and um, stay updated when I post new classes. Tomorrow, thank you very much, Flo, for your donation. Tomorrow I'll be back at 1045 Central Time for a daily oracle reading, and then I do a Reiki blessing afterwards. Friday, I do another daily oracle reading with um, a Reiki blessing, and then Friday's our new moon, so I'll be hosting a grounding Reiki yoga class using the energy of the new moon in Aries. It's the first new moon of the zodiac cycle. It's happening at a power number of 11, just beautiful, magical energy with this Neptune-Jupiter conjunction coming up in time. Things are so good right now. If you use the energy that's happening around us, things are so good. Yes, April 12th will be rock and roll. That's the day of the conjunction. <sighs> Appreciate all of this Aries energy that we have going on too. This is a very good time to go, like do your work. You have the energy. Sun is in Aries. Mercury is in Aries. But we have all this dreamy, dreamy. So like move forward and explore all of your metaphysical sides. Um, maybe find new types of meditation that you've never tried before. You might uncover something. And all of this like go, go, go energy is benefiting us until there's a retrograde coming on April 30th. Pluto's going to go retrograde on April 30th. But as of right now, all the planets are still moving forward. So use this next month to move forward. And then when Pluto grows retrograde, that's a time to just take a step back and revisit some things. So for the next month, get your shit done. <laughs> Helen, we are all the best and there are no accidents. Remember, we are here for a reason. Thank you for the wonderful reminder, Helen. We are all unique puzzle pieces to the grand puzzle. And if one piece is missing, the puzzle is not complete. Take care, everybody. I will see you very soon.